Hi everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Julian Miller and in this video what we're going to do is just go over the basics of what an object really is and we're going to go about creating our own class. So what exactly is an object? Well, if you think about it, everything is an object. A fighter jet is an object, a soldier is an object, likewise a cactus is an object. Even your browser's window is an object. And if you think about it some more, objects have attributes. For instance, this cactus has a color. It's green. It also has thorns that are sharp. In addition, it has a particular length, width, and height. But objects can also perform actions. For instance, this fighter jet can take off, it can land, it could fire a missile, it can roll, and, you know, you kind of get the picture. Now, fighter jets don't just appear out of thin air. You need to construct them with something, and to do this, we use blueprints. Now, in programming, what we do is we give these real-world terms uh, a different name. We call attributes members, actions are called methods, the blueprints are called classes, and when we construct an object out of a class or a blueprint, we call that instantiation. Let's get to it and create our first class. To keep things simple, I'm just going to model a dog, uh, pretty much just like I did in the intro review video. Uh, like I said, just to keep things simple. Now, it's common convention to define each class in its own pair of files, a header and an implementation file. So we're going to start with the, uh, the header file. So I'll go ahead and create a new file. And we're going to create a header file and call it dog.h. Now this is how we go about declaring our class. Class dog bracket public colon close bracket and semicolon. So there we go, there's our class. We're going to give our dog two attributes or members. We're going to give it a name and we're going to give our dog an age. Now it's complaining that it can't find the uh, string, so we're going to have to include the string header. And we're almost done actually uh, declaring our dog class, but we do have to we have to add one more thing here, and that's called a constructor. And a constructor is basically a special method that a class uses to specify how to go about instantiating it. And pay close attention to how we write this. It's just like any normal function, except it doesn't have a return type, and it has the exact same name as our class. And in this case, we're going to need to um, specify which or which kind of arguments that we're going to need to supply to our blueprints here to construct our dog. And you can see that we need a string for the name and we need to supply it an age. Great. So that's about all there is uh, to do in our header file. Let's go ahead and work on the implementation now of this constructor. So we'll add a new source file, dog.cpp, and we have to include our dog header file. Notice that because we created this 
this header file here. It's local to our project, so we use these quotation marks rather than the angled brackets. And in our dog.h, here we have our function prototype, or our method prototype header. So we just write it like this. And all we're going to do is set the dog's name to the name we have coming in, age equals age. Now this gets kind of confusing because we don't know what we're talking about here. It's not quite clear. This name versus this name, it doesn't really look, doesn't really look like we're doing anything. But what we can do is we can actually use the scope operator there are a number of ways of doing this. Uh, we could use the scope uh, resolution operator and say that we're talking about the dog's name and setting it to the name we put in. Likewise, the dog's age, setting it to the age we pass in. Uh, but what I like to do is just change this and prefix it with in. So we know that, sorry, this should be in age. So we know that these are arguments we're passing in to our dog constructor. And last thing we need to do is specify that this function here is actually the dog's constructor. So we have to tell the system our, uh, our scope. And that's about it. So we have our first class done up. So the blueprints to essentially create a dog. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, change change our, our prototype here in the header just to keep things consistent. So let's go ahead and make an instance of our dog now. First, we'll have to include our dog.h header. And to instantiate it, all we have to do is specify that we're creating a dog. And this is where our constructor is called. So we're going to supply it a name and an age. And we can go ahead and output this information. We'll run it, compile, and here we go, here's our dog. We have an instance of a dog with the name Spike, and an age of two. So you can see that we're just creating an instance of a dog with the variable uh, letter D. We're calling our constructor. And we can even go ahead and create another instance of a dog. We'll name this one dog2. So we'll just rename these. And we'll create another dog. This time we're going to just, at, we're at first going to instantiate it with uh, some, some kind of like an empty variables almost. And we can modify these variables or the members of the dog just as if we were doing it with a struct. So we're modifying the second dog's name, changing it to Rex, and its age to five years old. And I'm going to just copy and paste this to save a little time. We'll print that out. And we'll run it again. There we go. 
So now we have two dogs, two instances of our dog class. We have the first dog and the second dog. And what we can actually do to make things uh, a little a little simpler or cleaner is we can change our constructor to just use some default values if we don't supply anything. So if we go back to our header, we can change this and we can tell our system that if we don't supply a string and an age, we're just going to use these default values. We're going to use just an empty string so the dog's not going to have a name and we're going to set its age to zero. So if we go back here to our main, we can actually get rid of this now and we'll run it again just to show you that it still works. So yeah, it still works. And if we hadn't modified the dog's members after we instantiate it, it will use those default values that we gave it. So it has that empty string and age of zero. And that's about it. Uh, we've defined a class and we've made two instances of it. In the next video, I plan on talking a little bit about encapsulation and creating methods. Thanks for watching.